सोमवार वेद चा आयोजक मडगाऊची जनता भाइयों बहनी नो आनी या माजा वडलान चा या जन्मभूमि मधे माला बोलूँ तुम्ही माजा ही सत्कार नहीं केला है माजा वडलान सा केला है क्या बदल थैंक यू वेरी मच सलील ने जहाँ दिवसी मला फोन करूँ विचार ले कि अपन याल का मी 90 परसेंट जात नहीं कुठे कारण कि बग एक इनविटेशन घेतले तर लोग का बंटा नाशिक मधे आशी एक व्याख्यान माला चालू आए के लिए वर्षा पसुन अनि मी नहीं नहीं बंटो करनी मेज़ सा महीना है गर्मी खूब अस्ते नाशिक का तो मी तेरा बंटो तो मी नवंबर दिसंबर मधे करा भी नक्की है पर जहाँ वही सलील ने फोन के लाड़ी मर जाऊँ तो नाव दिला मी लगे इस मरा लो आई विल हैव टू कम बिकॉज़ आई कुड नॉट से नो टू कमिंग टू मर जाऊँ सो थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर माय फादर दिस वाज अ वेरी स्पेशल प्लेस लेट मी देवर आल्सो से व्हेन सलील सेड व्हाट सब्जेक्ट वुड यू लाइक टू स्पीक अबाउ मरा इतना आगोदर ते मंटिल यू शुड स्पीक ऑन पॉलिटिक्स विच आई वाज रेडी फॉर पर पॉलिटिक्स मंजे विवाद पॉलिटिक्स मंजे देवल बी सम कंट्रोवर्सी देवल बी सम डिबेट देन ही सेड ही सेड विल यू स्पीक ऑन सेवेंटी फाइव इयर्स ऑफ इंडियन क्रिकेट बेस्ड ऑन योर बुक सो आई सेड आई एम वेरी हैप्पी टू स्पीक ऑन क्रिकेट कांटे क्रिकेट वर व्हेन यू स्पीक पीपल स्ट so I thought that the better way is to speak on something that will make people smile, but I will link my cricket lecture today to politics and society in a way. Because I think we should speak about society and use cricket only as a mirror in a way to talk about society around us. So that's how I have decided to, in a way, position this lecture. It is 75 years of, of India, yes. It is 75 years of being a democratic nation. How does our democracy, how does cricket in a way, reflect what we have achieved and what we have not about democracy? But before that, let me just complete my father's story because I think that is important. Uh, my father left Margao at the age of 70 in 1957 uh, and uh, never really came back full time, but his heart was always here. And I'll tell you how. His best series was 1971 in West Indies. Uh, and I remember someone asked him once, how is it that you were so successful in the West Indies? And he said that I was successful in the West Indies because West Indies reminded me of Goa. So every time I played in the West Indies, I felt at home. Only difference was here you had Feni, there you had Brahm. And but the palm trees, the beaches, the general atmosphere reminded him of Goa. He is still the only Goa-born cricketer to play for India. And uh, he was taught, and I think I mentioned this in the book, by the local tailor here in Madgao. And I have tried to imagine, how is it that a local tailor, Digambar Kamath sir knows his name, I don't know Mr. Kamath is here, but there was a tailor who, uh, who taught my father uh, the game. And uh, that tailor had learned the game listening to radio commentary. And you think about it, today's TV is here, today's computers are here, computer today's children can watch everything on computer or everything on a mobile phone. Who plays what shot, how to, co even coaching is now done through YouTube. त्याग कारण उठला एक दर्जी जो आए मर्गाव सरकार लाहन सरकार जागे 1940s में दे जहाँ वह इस पोर्चुगीज़ आजू ने होते ही थे तेला तेवड़ा क्रिकेट ची हाउस होती तेला क्रिकेट से तेवड़ा नॉलेज होता कि ही कुड पास ऑन द नॉलेज टू अ नदर यंग बॉय एंड द यंग बॉय देन गोज एंड प्लेस अ मैच इन सम ग्राउंड uh, which is near the railway track and it was not a proper pitch 1956 Reserve Bank of India comes to Goa and uh, my father scores a century at age of 16 
So the Reserve Bank of India captain comes to my father's brother and says, uh, allow your son to, allow your brother to come to Mumbai, he can do better there. It took him six months to get all the work permits and permissions because it was still Portuguese rule Goa. Goes to Mumbai, five years later plays for India. And I often used to ask myself, or my father used to tell me, you have had all the facilities, that is me. I had good coaching, best bats, best equipment, everything for yourself. But you were not good enough. Or I used to ask myself, why was I not, why was I not as good as my father could be? So my father told me, lots of things in life run in the blood, not cricket. For cricket, you need talent. And the talent and the passion must come from someone upstairs. So you can have all the facilities, best coaching, best grounds, but you cannot, in a way, make it to becoming an India cricketer. And therein lies a story for India today. Because in India, there is a huge emphasis on that you have a mulga, you have a doctor, you have a doctor, you have a doctor, you have a doctor, you have a lawyer, you have a lawyer. Abhishek Bachchan can become a film star because Amitabh Bachchan film star is a film star. Jitendra Chapar Mulga film star hoon jato. How he looks does not matter, he gets a film break. But the one area of life where you cannot become a sporting champion only because your father is one is cricket. So I am a living example of the fact that nepotism does not work in cricket. In cricket you need talent. Picture madhe ta chalta azun. Adi Bollywood madhe ta khupa chahe. Politics madhe chalta. Badun Rahul Gandhi is a politician. Not because he is someone who has proved himself in politics, but he comes from a family of politicians. There is, in Indian cricket, if you look, barring Amarnath and to some extent Manzrekar, there is no instance of constant generations playing for India. In fact, Amarnath is a rarity. Vadirpan khele and in teche don mula khele. But otherwise, cricket is not about nepotism. But therefore, I think it offers an important lesson in life. That in life, if you are, it, it, just because you belong to a particular family, does not ma make you successful. My father had no godfather. He went to Mumbai in 1957 from Goa, knew no one virtually. One of his cousins, Sopan Sardesai, was a good cricketer, who had played for Bombay University. But that was it. And that was a very, very different India. That was an India where you had to be often part of a princely family or part of some big gymkhana or big club to play for India. So I think in a way, in these 75 years, one of the things that has changed in a way for this country is that today I think people can make it without necessarily needing a big patron or networks like you needed 50, 60 years ago. 50, 60 years ago, it was not so easy to make it in any field of life without some network being attached to it. That is changing very slowly, but it is changing. In 1932, when India played its first test match in cricket, the original Indian captain was Maharaja of Patiala. Not because he was a good cricketer, but because he was a Maharaja. When he withdrew, he was replaced by Maharaja of Porbandar. Not because he was a good cricketer, but because he was a Maharaja. Eventually, mercifully, C.K. Naidu, who was the best cricketer of his generation, was made the captain. But it was an India which was very, very feudal. It was an India which was, therefore, an India which was where you needed the blessings of some godfather to achieve what, he, what you could in the cricketing game. My father was lucky that he had good coaches, that someone came and coached him. Manya Naik was his coach. But Manya Naik was the Wilson College coach who used to coach on the ground. He was not a big name. But therefore, it was much more difficult for my father's generation to make it in Indian cricket than perhaps it is today. Because today you have all the facilities, all the opportunities, all the coaching. You don't have to play on one ground in Madgaon today to play for India and then be spotted by a Reserve Bank of India captain. In fact, the biggest change 
that I think has taken place in India and Indian society slowly for the positive in the last 75 years is the rise of what I call small town India. India was dominated for the first 40, 50 years of its independence by the big cities. And that reflected even in cricket teams. In 1971, when India defeated England for the first time in England, six of the 11 players were from Mumbai. So whether you are from Goa, whether you are from any small part of Maharashtra, you had to come to Mumbai to play for India. By 2011, when India won the World Cup for the first time, six of the 11 players were from small towns. Mahendra Singh Dhoni from Rachi, Harbhajan Singh from Jalandhar, Munaf Patel from Baruj, Zahir Khan from Srirampur, Suresh Raina from Ghaziabad, Virinder Sehwag from Najamgarh. And the balance of power started changing, I believe, at that time in Indian society to the point where even our politicians, and to be fair to Prime Minister Narendra Modi, he also comes from a small town of Vadnagar. So when you think about it, making the journey, I've often thought for even a Modi, for Mr. Modi from Vadnagar to seven Lok Kalyan Mark cannot be an easy journey. Because I think the journey in a way shapes the person. Someone tells me, how is it so, you see, Modi seems to have on the positive, it's a positive and a negative. The positive is there is a fire in the belly. Ki kuch karna hai. Ki once you made such a long journey in life, that life journey makes you stronger. In fact, my father used to often tell me this, that the problem with you is that you have lived a much happier life, comfortable life than I had. I had only my cricket. If I didn't succeed in cricket, I would not succeed in life. You, on the other hand, had the best schooling, went to the best places to study. Therefore, you had the advantage in a way of being in an environment where you felt that even if I don't succeed at cricket, I can be a lawyer. And if I don't succeed at anything, then you can be a journalist. But you have options in life. I had no options. Sometimes I think the rise of small town India and the rise of the small town cricketer is because they feel that this is the only way they are going to make life's journey to reach somewhere to be more mobile in life. Think about Mahendra Singh Dhoni. You know, I often say that before Mahendra Singh Dhoni, there was Dilip Sardesai. That Dilip Sardesai also came from a small town. And like Dhoni, he also had no godfather who could take him or, or that Goa was some place like Jharkhand was not a place on the cricket map, neither was Goa. But Mahendra Singh Dhoni in 2001, 2001 used to work as in the railway department in Khadakpur station. Ten years later, he was lifting the World Cup. Now, I asked Dhoni once, and this is a question which I have put in the book also, ki aapko kabhi pressure nahi laga? Ki aap last over hai, sola run chahiye jeetne ke liye, Mahindra Singh Dhoni crease par hai, everybody is shouting for India to win. You seem very cool. Aapko koi ye nahi pressure kabhi nahi lagta ki itna high, bade match mein you can score runs. And he said something which has stood with me. Ki Radhi bhai aisa hai, कि प्रेशर वो होता है कि जब आप वो रेलवे डिपार्टमेंट में यू आर इन चार्ज ऑफ टिकट कलेक्शन और वो खरकपुर स्टेशन में सब बंगाली लोग ट्रेन में घुसने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं और आपका जो सुपरवाइजर है आपको कहता है किसी को बिना टिकट में अंदर अलाउ नहीं करना तब प्रेशर होता है कि कैसे वो ट्रेन को कैसे संभालना है हाउ डू आई मैनेज द ट्रेन फिर उसके बाद क्रिकेट मैच तो देख लेंगे इसी लाइफ lessons are such if you have taken a journey of the kind that Mahendra Singh Dhoni has in life you are able to use every step of that journey as a stepping stone to become in a way someone who is able to achieve more and I think in the last 75 years India now has more and more such stories particularly in the world of sport because sport is based on pure talent and not on connections that you will have more and more such Indian success stories. Neera Chopra with the javelin throw who won a gold medal comes again from a small town. 
you've got more and more people in business coming in now from smaller towns and not just the big cities who are in a position through a new startup culture to actually make it much bigger than their ancestors could have ever, ever imagined. This is in a way a symbol of a new India. A new India, I believe, is geographically no longer dominated by the big cities. And I think that is a narrative which is not just true of sport, but it is true of politics, it is true of society. The belief that only those who lived in the big cities, in the metros, who had access to the best education, were the only people who would make India, is changing. If you look at the first parliament of this country, many of the people in that first parliament, they say English speaking, they came from Oxford or Cambridge. They came, many of them were law, top lawyers, top uh, 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 educationists. They had come through the freedom struggle, no doubt. They had also uh, done a lot of sacrifices, no doubt about that. But they were often children of privilege. You had fewer farmers as politicians in the first few Lok, uh, uh, Lok Sabhas. You had a much larger number of upper caste people in the first few Lok Sabhas than you have today. Today the Lok Sabha is dominated more and more by backward caste and by smaller groups. Unlike the first parliaments which were dominated by the Brahmins. So we have moved from an upper caste society to a society which in, in its own way is slowly changing, slowly, politically, socially and culturally. And cricket, to my mind, is one example of it. Remember, on a cricket field, one of the advantages that is there is you are not defined by which caste, community or religion you come from. So when... Mohammad Shami is bowling from one end and Umesh Yadav is bowling from the other. You don't think that Mohammad Shami jo hai, he is a Muslim and Umesh Yadav is a Yadav. If Mohammad Shami contested an election, he would be called a Muslim. And if Umesh Yadav contested an election, aap bote, ye Yadav hai. Politics divides us. Cricket unites us. Politics does not give you the op Politics is increasingly based on vote banks. And because vote banks are of the nature they are today, fewer and fewer Muslims, for example, today are represented in parliament. India now has the fewest, the, the lowest level of Muslim representation in parliament since 1952. Why? Because more and more political parties believe Muslim candidates will not be voted for by Hindus. That is the reality. And because politics works on vote banks, you don't see enough Muslim representation now in most of the major parties. The BJP does not have a single Muslim MP. And even the Congress's Muslim MPs have reduced in recent times. But on the cricket field, two weeks ago, India had a fast bowling attack, which was Mohammad Shami, Mohammad Siraj and Umran Malik. And that is something which is something to treasure. Because when you saw all three of them bowling, you did not think that Umran Malik is the son of a fruit seller from Jammu. That Mohammad Shami's father used to work on a farm in Amroha to earn enough money to send his son to go and play cricket in Kolkata. And Mohammad Siraj's father was a rickshaw driver. But these are the three, a fruit seller's son, a rickshaw driver's son, and a farmer's son are your three fast bowlers playing for India in a T20 match. Now, one way of looking at it is it is an occasion to celebrate. The other way to look at it is why doesn't the rest of the society do what cricket is doing? Why is the rest of the society not able to create more opportunities for people to be able to express their talents without being told you are a Yadav, Ab, Brahman ho, aap uh, uh, Dalit ho, and therefore you do not get sometimes the opportunities you need. Why is it that society cannot follow what cricket does? And I think in that we have to start looking at how cricket has uniquely created in India a more open society, a more a society based on true opportunity. What is holding India back, in my view, in the last 75 years, 
is India has not been able to create equal opportunities for all. If you look at the Oxfam report on inequality, 70% of the national wealth of this country is controlled by 10% of the population. Now, once that is the case, and that has not changed, it has only become worse since in the last 70 years in a way, or has actually remained almost the same. It means that only a small group of people continue to control the wealth of this country. And if only a small group of people continue to control the wealth of this country, they ensure that their children get the access to the best education, the best health facilities, the best that society can offer. That is not an equal opportunity society. An equal opportunity society ensures that every individual has equal access to the facilities that society can provide. One of the reasons why cricket is slowly succeeding is because today you can go to any district in the country and there will be a cricket ground there where every person can come and play. In the 1940s and 50s in this country, Cricket was only allowed for those who are part of some gymkhana or some club for a long time. Ki tumala gymkhana chi membership paijal hoti taras tumi kheu shakta. When my father played for Hindu gymkhana, he got his membership because Vinu Mankad, the great cricketer, saw him play a match and said, Mai tumko member bana rao aaj sham ko. But he needed someone like that. Today, a young person can go to any coaching camp anywhere in India to play and fulfill his or her dream. So cricket has provided opportunity to people. Politics and society in general does not. Yes, our film industry also has cases of people who are coming virtually from nowhere to become big stars. Shah Rukh Khan is a good example. You see, out of all the Khans, Shah Rukh Khan had no film filmy background. He was a boy from middle class Delhi with no godfather but made it to becoming the biggest star of his times. But Shah Rukh Khan in the film industry is an exception. In film industry even now a lot of success depends on aap kisko jante hai. In cricket that does not matter. Otherwise, an Umran Malik could not be playing today for India. Siraj could not be playing. Shami could not be playing. Umesh Yadav, whose father was a coal mining laborer. And Umesh Yadav's first job that he applied for was a traffic constable in, in Nagpur. He did not get the job. He said, Jab wo job nahi mila, tab socha abhi cricket hi karte hai. So, Nagpur traffic's loss is Indian cricket's game. But the fact is, that all these boys got some opportunity in life. The point I'm trying to make is that while we celebrate this 75 years of Indian democracy, we should ask ourselves, democracy for whom? Is it only a democracy for the 10% who, who have access to 70% of the country's wealth? Or is it democracy for each and every Indian? Democracy has on, only real meaning when all of us have equal opportunity. The only day we are all equal is voting day. On voting day, all of us have to stand in the same line. Whether you are a VVIP or whether you are an Aam Admi. And what is good about India is on that day when anyone tries to break the line, sabki, everybody gets a voice and says, hey, line madhe za. But that is the only occasion when someone who is driving a Mercedes and someone who is driving an auto rickshaw can both claim that they are equal citizens. But that only happens once every five years. Democracy cannot be simply about voting once every five years. It cannot be a ritual. Cricket, on the other hand, can be celebrated 365 days of the year. And therefore, it becomes in a way part of, our, of who we are. One of the other big changes that has taken place is the rise of market economy. You see, when cricket started in the 40s and 50s, most cricketers were dependent on a job with either State Bank of India or like my father joined ACC. There were four or five public sector companies that provided jobs and a few private sector outfits like Tata's that provided jobs. You are basically almost like bonded labor. 
कि तुम्हें ऑफिस मे नौ पांच यार पांच वजता तुम्हें क्रिकेट या ग्राउंड वर जाऊन दोन तास क्रिकेट खेलना तुम्हें आम क्लब आम ऑफिस ऑफिस मैचेस खेलना बट वी विल पे यू अ सैलरी एंड यू विल प्ले फॉर दी ऑफिस द बी सी सी आई वॉज इवन वर्स द बी सी सी आई गेव ईच प्लेयर यूज टू बी पेड इन दोज डेज टू हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी रुपीज अ टेस्ट मैच टेस्ट मैच एंड वंस वेरी इंटरेस्टिंगली इन द नाइनटीन फिफ्टीज इंडिया डिफीटेड न्यूजीलैंड इन थ्री डेज एंड द प्लेयर्स गॉट अ चेक ऑफ हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी रुपीज सो वन ऑफ द प्लेयर्स वेन टू द बोर्ड ऑफिशियल एंड सेट यू आर गिविंग अस हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी रुपीज The, we are supposed to get 250 rupees. That is a, he said, आपको किसने बोला तीन दिन में मैच जीतने के लिए सो दे वर इफेक्टिवली दिहाड़ीज डे लेबर बींग पेड फिफ्टी रुपीज अ डे टू प्ले फॉर इंडिया टूडे इमेजिन अ पर्सन वॉज नॉट इवन प्लेड रणजी ट्रॉफी कैन गेट एन आई पी एल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट फॉर एट क्रोर्स फॉर पेइंग फॉर एट वीक्स फॉर एट वीक्स you get 8 crores even if you have not played ranji trophy kapil dev was telling me the other day he said radhi bhai mai to india ke liye 15 saal without a break khela person is earning 8 in 8 weeks what i did not even earn in 15 years i said sir tum wrong zamane mein jan janme ho but he admitted the world has changed we are a market economy you see today we celebrate in this country the list of the wealthy how the wealth who is you know when gautam adani today is under pol, uh, a political uh, is the subject of a political controversy but same gautam adani 4 weeks ago was on the cover of every magazine as india's third richest person we were all celebrating it from celebrating gautam adani uh, uh, a month ago now we are saying acha he must be having some political link we knew what this hindenburg research report is saying we many people have been talking about this for a long time but today india celebrates wealth today your status does not matter on your at times even on your educational qualifications it matters on your bank balance and as a result i think somewhere we have lost track of our moral values and i think that is true of cricket as much as it is true of society and life in general because while the cricketers of the previous generation may not have made the kind of money that they do today there was to my mind they were more sincere to the game because the game was their life today it has become they are very talented no one doubts the talent of our players or their commitment to the game but none of them want to play ranji trophy none of them want to play club cricket they only want an ipl contract i write in this book that sunil gavaskar once played for india scored a double century in england came in the morning back to india at 5 am in the morning at 8 o'clock was there on the mumbai maidan to play for dadar union which cricketer of today will want to come and play for his club called dadar union after having come from a foreign tour so the local connect with the maidan where you grew up where you were nurtured has been has gone and in a way there is this disconnect which is there around us in society that what our roots are where we come from no longer seems to matter as much as it used to we are now in a globalized world so i can understand that our ambitions are different but surely it matters where you started off in life and i think that is in a way a sense of belonging of identity that cricket provides you when you play for india you represent the best of india and only 11 people can play so i think what we need to recognize is sports provides you a certain identity that cuts across all barriers when you are on the cricket field you are a true patriotic indian our politicians talk patriotism but they are their first instinct is my next election kaise jeetunga we have seen this in goa more than any other place in goa there is no notion any more of party loyalty you want you know you move from one party to another as if you are changing your clothes every day 
because identity no longer your identity is not you know who you belong because we have lost a sense of identity we have lost a sense of ideology what is the basis on which we become politician those who become politicians used to become on a basis of a ideology a vichar a vichar dhara now there is how do i get power i think cricket mercifully is still away from all of that on on the cricket field a virat kohli when he plays for india is representing above all else his country not any identity that is narrow he represents an inclusive india you know virat kohli has been targeted in the past that wo tattoo kitna lagata hai you know he's a he drives all he has fancy cars he's living a life in a bubble but let me tell you he works incredibly hard i you know he get, if you see the fitness levels that what virat kohli has done it takes a lot to achieve that the hard work that uh, there are no shortcuts the important thing to recognize in life in politics in particular there can be shortcuts sometimes in cricket there are no shortcuts you can play a late cut you can play a square cut but you cannot take shortcuts you have to work hard and that incredible work ethic is what makes indian cricket so something that we can truly they are our role models they become our role models because they are real life heroes you see a film hero at the end of the day may get a film double to make shahrukh khan will have a film double to do the stunts he will get a box office return on the film like pathan but the the real glory should go to the person who is doing the action sequences on the cricket field there is no one else to do the action sequences for you you have to do them yourself in fact my father often used to tell me this again he said when you are on the cricket field your surname will not get you any runs your bat will have to get you the runs now that i think is a life lesson for all of us because all of us today in a way need to recognize that there are no shortcuts in life especially the younger generation there is a new india which is growing up on the bubble of how to get rich quick how do i become you know how do i become kaun banega millionaire kaun banega karodpati nothing wrong in becoming a karodpati it's good but you need to work to get there there are no shortcuts to becoming a karodpati in life and in that sense i think cricket's work ethic and the stories in a way of these cricketers most of many of whom have come from relatively humble backgrounds is a life lesson for us that there is no substitute in life to hard work you know there is a sense also that we are through cricket living india's great dream to become a truly world class nation in the sense that cricket is one of the few areas in the world where we can play claim we are number 1 you see we cannot claim we are a vishwa guru as the prime minister sometimes does unless we are actually able to get as i said a more equal society unless we are able to actually lift the per capita income of our country there is no point in saying we are becoming a 5 trillion dollar e e economy without lifting the per capita income of millions of indians we have to build in my view a equal opportunity society like cricket does if we have to reach the next level cricket achieved what it was because cricket democratized itself cricket made sure that it is not an elite sport cricket in india is no longer a sport played only in gymkhanas and clubs cricket is played on every maidan in this country but politics in this country is still a closed shop out of our 543 M mps who are there in parliament more than 140 even today are people whose sons fathers are people whose family members were also politicians that means one in every 3 mps in this country even today is linked to a family which is also in politics now politics was never supposed to be gharane shai you know you could have you could possibly think of a industrial gharane shai a family business 
But politics was not supposed to become a family business. In India, politics has become a family business. Cricket has not. I am a living example of that. In a way, therefore, we have to break the shackles to democratize India. How do you democratize? Cricket's great lesson to me is that cricket is teaching people the value of democratizing a large subcontinental country. Except for the Northeast, no part of India today cannot say that we are not producing a cricketer of great talent. And I have no doubt that even the Northeast will produce a great cricketer in the next 10, 20 years. It is one of the actually interesting aspects. Why did football not do what cricket did? See, we are a country where, or Goa also, and many other parts, we should have been a football country. Because football is a poor man's sport in a way. Football is the sport of the masses. But football, unfortunately, did not get a setup where they could think beyond their own local sport. Football got localized, cricket got globalized. Cricket realized that you cannot compete in the modern world without raising the bar. In football, we were happy if Goa defeated Kerala, we were happy in Santos Trophy. Goans were not interested ki, will our Goa player ever play in English Premier League? So therefore, football, unfortunately, also because of the kind of people who ran the game in football. Most football, uh, most football federations are run by politicians. And most of them believe that the players are again, ki, uh, we are the maibap of the players. That maibap culture has to go. I know that in cricket also now Jai Shah is the son of Amit Shah and therefore is where he is. But there is an advantage also in that. Because of Jai Shah, you can get IPL played during COVID times. Because he was able to cut through all the, all the red tapeism. You need administrators who are politicians. Because they have connections, influence to get the game going. I have no problem with politicians being administrators, provided they focus on cricket administration, rather than use it only to increase their own clout. So some of the most successful cricket administrators have been politicians over the years. The larger point though, and I keep coming back to it as a consistent theme is, how do I ensure that over the next 20-25 years, since we talk about the next 25 years in the Amrit Kal, how is it that more young boys and girls from let's say a Madgao can actually become big player, uh, can become sports persons at the highest level. Why is it that even after so many years, only one cricketer from Goa has played for India? And I think that is where somewhere the Goa Cricket Association and indeed those who actually mean well for Goan cricket or Goan sport have to ask themselves, have we done enough to give opportunities, equal opportunities to each and every Goan? Or have we even treated cricket as our personal fiefdom? For a few years, I think Goa Cricket Association was banned by the BCCI because of an alleged ticket scam. Now, Goa since then has obviously made strides. They are now in Ranji Trophy's elite group. But can Goan cricket actually provide the kind of environment that makes every Goan feel that his or her son and daughter has equal opportunity? And I mentioned daughter because I think one of the biggest and best changes that has happened in Indian sport is the rise of women's cricket. The story of women's cricket is in some way even better than that of men's cricket. Diana Edulji tells me that in 1983, the very year that Indian men won the Cricket World Cup and Kapil Dev created history, India's women had to sponsor their own trip to go to New Zealand to play to the World Cup. And she took a bank loan and had to repay it for the next three years so that she could go and play in the World Cup. During the women's interstate matches, they used to stay on the railway platforms at times because they did not have the funds to be actually able to stay in a proper hotel. Now the women's IPL is here. All our women cricketers will become karodpatis. And suddenly it will not only be the son in the house, but the daughter in the house who will also say, I want to play for India. And that is the kind of society we need to create. 
where you give people, make them dream big, give them a sense of hope. Too many areas in our society even today do not give people that sense of hope. Because we deny them equal education, deny them equal health facilities. Take COVID. During COVID times, if you had access to a good doctor or a good hospital, you were okay. But what about the millions of people who didn't have access to it? You see, we celebrate, as I said, democracy, and we cannot, in that democracy in 75 years, ensure in the nation's capital that there is enough oxygen in our hospitals. What is there to celebrate then? We have to learn and embrace and accept that there are critical areas of our life. We still invest so little in education and health in this country. The great sporting nations invest in education and health. Those countries that do the best at the Olympic Games, that do best in, 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 in big sporting events, are those countries that have invested in education and health. We are happy with cricket. We are a one, nation, one sport nation. But if you want to be a multi-sport nation that recognizes the importance of sports in building a new generation, then you have to invest in education and health. Because there are still schools in this country that do not have playgrounds. There are still hospitals in this country that are struggling with oxygen. You don't produce world-class athletes if you create a society that does not build world-class infrastructure in key areas like education and health. And therefore I make the point, and I say this in the book also in Democracy 11, that a true democracy is based on equal opportunity only. Then we can call ourselves and celebrate 75 years. Yes, we are making progress. The glass is half full and the glass is half empty. As journalists, we learn to keep the glass half empty. If you are in public relations, you keep it half full all the time. Politicians will always tell you, sab kuch achha hai. Our job is also to say, ki sab, su, sab kuch achha nahi hai. And therefore, I think that we have to recognize that while we celebrate what we have achieved in cricket, while we are celebrating, as I said, the rise of women's cricket, because women's cricket means that slowly gender no longer has the same barrier that it had 10, 20, 30 years ago. Some of the best cricketers are coming from Haryana. Some of our best women sports persons and women's cricketers are coming from Haryana, a state which had the worst sex ratio till 10 and 20 years ago. But look at why Kerala does better in more sports than other parts of the country because Kerala invested in health and education long before many other parts of the country did. So I think the bigger message is that if we are able to build a true democracy where every Indian citizen gets dignity and feels a sense of pride of achievement and give every Indian child the right to dream, where an Umran Malik becomes a symbol for every person in Jammu, Hindu or Muslim to dream that they can have a better life. When a Siraj becomes a symbol that every rickshaw driver in the old city of Hyderabad feels that my son can do something. When Shefali Verma, this young cricketer from Haryana, is able to convince every Haryanvi girl that I have to cricketer a cricketer. When we are able to give those dreams wings and actually enable them to fly, that's when we can build a better India. A better India is to be built only on the basis of giving more and more Indians the opportunities to grow up. My father was lucky. You know, he, he was just lucky that he was spotted by this Reserve Bank of India captain and was asked to come to Mumbai. Otherwise, he would have probably been happy here, probably in the audience here at the age of 82. <laughs> playing, having played some local cricket tennis ball matches and never really recognized his dream. But that Reserve Bank of India captain who took him to Mumbai, that coach Manya Naik who gave him coaching at Wilson College, the great Vinu Mankad who said, Beta, I will pay your Gymkhana fees. Because the Gymkhana had a fee, I think, that time of 5 rupees. But Vinu Mankad said, this 5 rupees fee of the Gymkhana membership, I am making you a Gymkhana member today. The selector, Lala Amarna, who chose him because he saw talent in him. Lala Amarnath was a great talent spotter. He, my father was playing an inter-university match. 
against Pakistan. And uh, there was a trial before the match, and one of the batsmen was hitting the, uh, you know, uh, 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 well, my, my father went into bat and played a few shots defensively. Lala Amarnath comes to him and says, Beta, you are very good defense. Thoda upar upar se maro. My father said, Why? He said, Ye baki jo selectors hai na, unko cricket kuch jante nahi hai, wo upar dekhenge khush ho jayenge. <laughs> so he hit a few lofted shots. Lala Amarnath then convinced those selectors, I want this boy to play for India. Now, how, you know, to get someone like a Lala Amarnath, who was ready to give you that opportunity to choose you at the age of 21. Then you go to the West Indies in 1962 as my father went as a reserve batsman, young 22 year old. You are at the other end and your captain is hit by a bouncer and almost dies, Nari contractor. So the next day, nobody in the team apparently wanted to bat because everybody was too scared. So Polly Umriger goes to my father and says, just go and tell at the meeting that I am ready to open the batting. In Indian cricket, that's the only way you do it. You go there, you take your opportunity. When you get your opportunity, you seize it and the rest is history. In 1971, my father's career was almost over. He was chosen as the last person on that cricket trip because Ajit Wadekar said, I want someone who I trust. On the eve of the test match, he was not supposed to play. Vishwanath got uh, fever, had to pull out of the match. My father got his chance. He scored the first Indian double century by an Indian in that match outside India. So it must be somewhere that there is luck. There is a God up there who has decided your time has come. But there is also the talent, the hard work, the skill and the opportunities that people provide you that enables you to become true sporting stars. And if there were enough people like a Lala Amarnath or a Vinu Mankad in all aspects of our society who could provide young people opportunities to fly, we would become a better place. The good news is that with all these NEET exams and IIT exams, all the boys who are succeeding are mainly again from small towns. The rich Indian kids are sending their children to America. They will crib about India and send their children to America. The poor and the middle class still have the belief that you can make a better life by doing competitive exams, by working hard at them, and there is no substitute for hard work. So democracy is a two-way process where you provide equal opportunities, but you also create an environment where hard work is respected above all else. If all of society can do that, we will do in the rest of society what cricket has done, become a number one nation. And that's why I look at cricket and smile about it because I always feel a sense of pride when I watch those cricketers play. I can imagine the journeys they have made. I'll leave you with one story which in a way typifies the kind of journey that cricketers have to make. Ajinkya Rahane, uh, the India cricketer, used to live in Dombivli. Now, I don't know how many of you know, Dombivli to Mumbai is about one and a half hour, two hours every morning. Uh, he had to come to practice every day at seven. He used to sometimes get up at 4.30 in the morning to take that first 5 a.m. Dombivli local. And that two-hour journey, he told me, is what made him a tough cricketer. He said, it made me prepare for any and every condition in life. Those who take those small journeys in life often go a very long way. And even bigger story is that of Virat Kohli. Virat Kohli was playing as an 18-year-old a match against Delhi versus some other team, Ranji Trophy, he had been picked for the first time. He was batting overnight at 20 not out. His father died that night. Virat Kohli, next morning, had a choice to make. Either I go to cremate my father or I go and carry on my innings. What did he do? He went next morning, went and batted, scored 85 saved Delhi from follow-on, and then went to cremate his father at 3 in the afternoon. Once you have done that at life at the age of 18, it must make you a much stronger person somewhere. That you have seen what life provides you. There are no soft options in that sense in life. 
And this is true of all the cricketers and many of them in democracies level as well. Even Mansur Ali Khan Patodi lost the sight of one eye. And despite losing the sight of one eye, one year later after losing that eye, was playing for India and scoring a century. So life takes you through the highs, it takes you through the lows, but those who stay the journey of life are the ones who really succeed. And that's why I believe our cricketers are our true role models more than many people in many other fields of this country. Thank you very much. Thank you.